So just who did invent the microwave oven? And why did they call it the radar range? Hey, it's Don Skaggs with Empowered Inventing TV, where we try to help you help other people by taking your great innovation, the right opportunity, mixing that with sound wisdom so you can turn them into real things like products and businesses that make money. And those people you help, they say thank you by sending you certificates of appreciation called dollar bills. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the strange development journey of what was originally called the radar range. And for some of you that might know what that means, that's actually what they originally called what's now known as the microwave oven. And uh, so in the early 1940s, British scientists uh, worked to create the cavity magnetron to power mobile radar in response to the threat to uh, bombing London in World War II. So, um, and uh, Raytheon was working on this uh, in conjunction with this, I'm sure. And enter Percy Spencer. Spur Percy was a self-taught scientist uh, that ended up leading Raytheon's power to division to produce radar equipment. Uh, so uh, one day Spencer was walk was uh, working, and he was standing in front of an active radar set. Uh, and when he noticed that he had a candy bar in his pocket, and his candy bar melted in his pocket. And, you know, I don't know about you, that, that scared me a little bit. I'm thinking, okay, what else is it heating up? But, but he noticed that and he thought, you know, why is that uh, happening? And he wasn't the first to notice this, as apparently it happened to a lot of people, but he was the first to investigate it and to look into it further. And uh, which, which I, I think, I think is a really, really cool thing. You know, a lot of people they'll just they'll go through life and they'll 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 just all these things will happen, but they don't do anything about it. They're like, well, what what could I do with that? And and so anyway, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here because I want to tell the rest of the story. It's a good story. Um, so he's he's standing in front of this radar set, and his candy bar in his pocket has melted. And so he then thought about, well, let me see if I could maybe heat some other foods. So the first thing he did was uh, try it with popcorn, uh, which is, is kind of funny. Uh, I guess, that was, I guess, apparently the world's first microwave pop popcorn. So he put popcorn in, in this, this chamber, in this, um, uh, uh, I, I guess, kettle or whatever whatever they were first trying with this magnetron and sure enough yep pop the popcorn great he said oh well that's great well let's try it with an egg can you kind of guess what happens next <laughs> so this was an open kettle apparently because uh, you know again they didn't think about this uh, so the uh, co-workers were like looking down into it to see what was going to happen is this egg going to cook and it exploded in their faces uh, of course um, so, so the next thing they did, and I have to think this egg had something to do with it. The next thing they did was attach a uh, high density or high uh, heavy duty electromagnetic field generator uh, to an enclosed metal box. <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, if something else explodes, it's going to explode in this box. But actually, it had a, a much better use than that. It was the, uh, and actually, you would call it truly the first microwave oven uh, because the magnetron would shoot into the metal box and it would not escape it like bounce around inside the metal box uh, so it would be safe and you wouldn't have you know candy bars in your pocket melting so so uh, so that seemed to work and so on October the 8th 1945 uh, so, uh, they filed a patent for a microwave cooking oven and they named it the radar range so this was radar equipment we were uh, we were working on and guess what we're going to call it the radar range so the very first one 
but that was commercialized, was not intended for homes. It was six feet tall, imagine this, uh, weighed 750 pounds, and sold for about $5,000 each in 1946, which in today's dollars, that's about $78,000. So these weren't for home use. No, they first was selling them. They were actually aimed it at uh, restaurants, commercial use to cook food fast. And you think about the microwaves and fast food places now, that's kind of a standard deal. Well, they were, some places were trying that in the, in the 40s. I don't know how well it worked out because you really don't see a, a progression of that. Uh, later, I don't think. I don't know that much about restaurant history to know that, but but you would think that it would have kind of took off if it would have been really, really great. So uh, fast forward to 1967. Uh, a countertop version was made for uh, and sold for $495. Now, 67, that's like $4,500 today. Uh, but it was still very large, very expensive. So, but you know, it finally developed and got smaller and got cheaper, just like other things. If you lived in the 80s, you, you, you remember the VCRs, they were like big boat sized things that weighed a ton and cost a lot of money. Uh, and, they, and they didn't work too well <laughs> a lot of times. And, but, uh, but you know, they got smaller and smaller and smaller and, and then finally disappeared. Uh, but uh, what can we learn from all this though? Well, number one is you don't have to have letters after your name to be a really great innovator. You really don't. Don't think that you have to have letters after your name. You know, I, and you know when we're we're working on projects and we do need somebody to pull somebody in that's like a PhD. You know, our, our uh, the running joke is you know you don't have to be a PhD. You just have to rent one. And uh, but you don't have to be have that, letters after your name to be an innovator. Spencer read books, textbooks, uh, during his time, he, had, he spent some time in the, in the Navy, I think, and he was standing watch, and while he was standing watch, he would read textbooks on trigonometry, calculus, chemistry, physics, metallurgy, the, the list goes on and on. And he didn't finish grade school. So he was a self, he, like I said before, he was self-taught. You don't, you can learn these things. By the way, we don't live in an age anymore where you have to stand and, and read textbooks to learn stuff. Uh, you, can, you can learn to do just about anything with uh, cyberspace at your fingertips. And uh, there's, there's always a way to figure out and learn how to do something. Uh, so a problem uh, in industry, and this is my other point, it, it can be an innovation in another one. Now think about it. It was kind of kind of a problem. Ooh, don't stand too close to the radar; you'll melt. Uh, so they were, what? And other people noticed that and like, well, don't have a candy bar in your pocket when you work in front of this thing. And but what what did uh, what did Percy Spencer do? He he paid attention to that. So be paying attention. Always be watching for these things that might be a frustrating problem in one place. It might be a complete innovation if plugged into some somewhere else, and that's exactly what happened with the with the radar range, if you will. So, um, uh, and another thing is, just because they came out with one, doesn't mean it can't be improved and reinvented. They originally came out with it; it was ginormous. It was used in restaurants. I kind of get the feeling maybe not so well in the '60s or in the '40s in the 50s and the 60s and uh, and then then they finally figured out okay let's make this smaller let's make this cheaper let's sell this to homes and uh, and, and and now we have what everyone knows and everybody just you know everybody's got a microwave oven uh, seems like everywhere uh, in in the US so so it doesn't mean you can't reinvent it if you see some oh somebody's already thought of that well, did the, yeah, but have they taken it to maybe some better place, some better market, some better use, some better better innovation about it? It can always be improved and make better, made better, and that guess what? That's something new and novel, even for something that already exists. So, what are you seeing as a problem uh, and not an innovation? 
uh, or that everybody else sees as a problem that could be an innovation? Let me know in the comments. Uh, and if you're looking for help with your innovation, you're going to want to join us at KY Inventors. We have, uh, uh, we have workshops. If you become a member, we have uh, open meetings. We have live streams. Uh, so join us for all that. Go to kyinventors.org and learn all about it. I'm Don Skaggs. This is Empowered Inventing TV. Like, subscribe, help us to build our tribe, and I'll look to see you at the next meeting, workshop, online course or on the next video.